So in this video, I'm going to talk about the only thing that's keeping your vehicle, your motorhome, your car, your bike, whatever it is, in contact with the road. I was walking Poppy this morning, and as I was walking along, there was a car parked up on the pavement, and I noticed on its tyre, on the, the front near side tyre, there was a great big split. It was about that long, and there was a piece of rubber hanging off it. So it got me thinking, how often do we look at our tyres? Lots of us will know the numbers I'm going to talk about and uh, some of the facts and figures in this video. Um, perhaps people new to motorhomes might not have considered some of the extra implications of motorhome tyres. So I hope you find this video useful, whether you're a beginner or whether you're used to this game. So first I'm going to talk about what the numbers mean on the side of the tyres and then I'll talk about how to look after your tyres and perhaps then you might want to consider when you should be changing them. So first of all, let's have a look what the numbers mean. So these are my Michelin Agilis camping tyres. I need a bit of a wash, I think. Yeah, definitely. So let's have a look at some of the numbers on here. The radials, I can tell that. Made in Poland. And there's a thing here about the tread. So the tread plies are two polyester plus three steel. The side walls are two polyester. That number's interesting, 1319, look for that. That tells me it was manufactured on the 13th week of 2019. Tubeless Michelin. And that's the, the number we're interested in, 22575R16CP. What does that mean? 225 is the width in millimetres across the tyre. 75 is the height of the tyre from the tread to the rim of the tyre and that's a percentage of 225 so that's about 165, 168 millimetres. R means the rims are 16 inch, R16, CP means they're camping tyres. And this is an interesting one, 116Q at 475 kilopascals. 475 kilopascals is about 68 psi and that's the load rating and the speed index of the tyres at that pressure. If you look on a Black Circles website in this case, 116 equates to a load of 1250 kilograms on the tyre, maximum load at that pressure. And the next one is the Q. The Q is a speed rating at that pressure, at that load of 99 miles an hour, 160 kilometers per hour. Let's have a think about how you should be looking after your tires. One of the things you'll hear regularly is perhaps that you should rotate the tires if the vehicle's been standing for some time. That's a consideration for vehicles that have been standing a long time. Some people overwinter their motorhomes, or in our case, uh, we've been stuck in a lockdown for three months and the vehicle's hardly moved. I think it's a good idea to rotate your tires. But what I should say is that the, ve the, the tyres that are fit to this vehicle have a higher load rating uh, than perhaps car tyres. And certainly uh, the commercial van tyres that you'll see on some motorhomes also have that high load rating. So it's less of a problem if, uh, if you're worried about flat spots, which is what we're talking about, and the reason for rotating your tyres. It's important to keep the correct pressures in the tyres and keeping them at perhaps the higher allowed pressure in the tyre will protect you from flat spotting. It's also worth saying that if there are any flat spots that appear, after a couple of miles of driving, those flat spots will, will even themselves out. So yes, you can uh, rotate your tyres if you want to, uh, by move, perhaps moving the vehicle or even by jacking up a wheel and just rotating the wheel a little bit but uh, I don't think it's a major consideration as far as I'm concerned. Correct tyre pressures. On our own motorhome, we have Michelin Agilis CP tyres, and what Michelin tend to say is that the tyres should be at 80 psi. I think that's way too high, and it gives you an uncomfortable ride. Other advice I've seen from Michelin is that you can reduce the pressures on the front tyres to give you a more comfortable ride. Uh, and I've actually reduced the pressures a little bit on the rear tyre as well. So I run with 75 psi in the back tyres and 65 in the front tyres, and that seems to work quite well. Other tyre manufacturers will actually say that your tyre pressures depend 
on the load on the tyres, which I think to me is a more sensible approach. And uh, you, you need to contact the tyre manufacturer to find out what pressures are in the tyres and you'll need to go to a weigh bridge to weigh the, each axle on the motor to find out what the actual load is, perhaps when you're fully loaded. And that's always worth doing anyway. Another important thing to do is to get the steering and uh, alignment check done. And if you go to a, a garage, you can ask them to do a steering and alignment check. They will check your, your suspension geometry and your wheel alignment. And that can cause undue wear, particularly on motorhomes again. Let's think about when tyres should be changed. Obviously first, if they're wearing out, uh, but that tends to be less of a problem with motorhomes because they do lower mileage than most other vehicles. The legal tread depth is 1.6 millimetres. The law requires that you have a minimum tread depth in a continuous band around the central three quarters of the tyre. And to help you judge how much tread you have left on your tyres, manufacturers will often mould tread bars in the tyres at roughly 1.6 millimetres. I would strongly suggest that you change your tyres before it gets anywhere near those tread bars. The Motor Industry Research Association say that once you're below three millimetres on your tyres, the stopping distance of your vehicle is going to be dramatically increased. Age is more of an important factor with motorhomes and also you need to check if there are blisters, cuts or grazes or cracks starting to appear in your tyres. Five to seven years is probably as old as you should go uh, with motorhome tyres, uh, obviously depending on the condition. Remember that from the 1st of February 2021, a law was introduced that bans tyres that are over 10 years old on HGVs and some minibuses. It's also a good idea perhaps to cover your tyre if it's exposed to direct sunlight. Sunlight will make your tyres age quite a bit. I'm quite lucky here because I'm in a sheltered location from the, from the sun and uh, I noticed on our previous motorhome that was sitting out in the sun for long times, after about four years those cracks started to appear, the crazing started to appear. So watch that. Always check for debris uh, in the tyres. You might want to take out any gravel that's stuck in the treads, look for cuts in the tyres, both sides, and any grazes or grazing that you see on the tyre and base your decision to change it on the tyre condition rather than saying I'll just change it after five years. So I hope you found this basics video useful. If you haven't already please consider subscribing. If you hit that notifications icon, that little bell icon, you'll get an update when I release another basics video. And if you did find this video useful give us a thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.